For this week's Summer on the Bay, we will be learning about some of the tools used in the classroom and in the field to conduct water quality sampling. Hi guys, so this week we are going to be talking about water quality and water quality is something that we teach our students here in the lab on our campus here in BIMS, but we also do it out in the field at our four near sites. And the equipment that we use can vary a little bit versus the classroom and out in the field. We're going to talk about a few of those pieces today. The first being a Niskin bottle. So this is a device that we use to collect a water sample that we just can't reach over the boat and sample ourselves. So what they'll do is it has two ends with giant suction cups and they'll pull those ends and clip them into the top here. That'd be nice and strong. And so once you have both ends attached to the top here, they're gonna lower that Niskin bottle down to the bottom. Once they reach the bottom, they're gonna actually bring it up just a little bit so we're not collecting sand and mud in our sample. And the rope actually has um, these like pink marks on it. So that just is pre-measured to see how deep we're going and this metal weight. And so once they are right at the depth that they want, they will drop the weight and it seals the sides and it seals in your sample. So then we can bring it up to the top of the boat and we can use this little valve here to retrieve individual samples so they can do individual sampling of that water sample that they took. Um, so this is a really good uh, piece of equipment just for basic water quality needs. So another piece of equipment that we're gonna be talking about today is called a Secchi disc. Um, and the Secchi disc is used to check turbidity. And so turbidity is testing all the kind of suspended matter that's in the water, basically how clear your water is. And the reason we test this, especially here in the Chesapeake Bay, is because we have a lot of plant life at the bottom. So this can incl uh, include a lot of seagrasses. And if light, that sunlight, can't penetrate down to those seagrasses, it can cause a lot of problems. So we want to have nice clear water. So to test that, the Seggy disc is a round disc and it has um, split into four parts, black and white. And they'll lower this down into the water. And like our Niskin disc, it does have a rope uh, with individual, this has like zip ties on it to represent certain distances that are already pre-measured. And they'll lower it down into the water basically until they cannot see it anymore. And so uh, obviously you're gonna see that black disappear first, but when you start to not see that white, that's when you know you want to take that measurement. So whenever we can't see it in the water anymore, we'll look at our rope and we'll look at that tab and that's what we record on our data sheet as that turbidity. And there are other sensors that you can use, but this is a really um, simple tool. It's actually something you can even make at home. And it's something we love to do with our students when we have them in the classroom. Hi guys, so we're out on the York River today. Um, and so we're actually gonna show you how we um, put our Secchi disc in the water and actually show you guys what it looks like when it starts to go deeper down to where it starts to disappear. Because remember, we're looking at how murky that water is over time. And so what we'll do is we're right on this short pier here. I am not sure how deep this water is, but we're gonna go ahead and drop in our Secchi disc. And usually you want to do it on the shaded side of wherever you're on a boat or on a pier. And so as you can see, it's already starting to get a little murky. And the black is definitely the hardest to see, but we can still see that white. And I would say right about there is where I'm not able to see with my own eyes where the disc is anymore. And so what they'll do is right where that was on the surface, which was right about here, they will record that measurement on their data sheet as that turbidity. Of course, we use other, other instruments um, that are a little more accurate when measuring turbidity, but again, like I mentioned, this is a really good tool, especially when we're teaching students about um, the importance of uh, having clean water, especially because oysters do a great job of filtering water and producing nice, clear water. And we do want that sunlight to be able to penetrate down to the bottom so our plants are able to survive as the next piece of equipment that we're going to talk about today is called a refractometer and this is going to help us test salinity so that is how salty your water is pretty simple um, how this device is used is there's a little clear flap here 
we lift that up. We wanna make sure the sensor is nice and clean. And we take our water sample through our little plastic pipette and we'll just drop one dot right on that sensor, close up our clear lid and we'll look through the eyepiece here. And when we're doing that, we're actually gonna be pointing it up towards the light. So if we're outside, point it up in the sky, if we're in a classroom, one of the overhead lights, and you'll see the parts per thousand that your water sample is. And we'll insert a photo here to show you um, an example of what it looks like through that eyepiece. Um, and when we're testing for salinity, we're looking for, um, in fresh water, it should be zero parts per thousand, so no salt. In brackish environments, usually we're seeing between 15, sometimes 12 to uh, 25 parts per thousand. And then in our oceans, in our saltwater environments, we're looking for 30 parts per thousand, sometimes even higher. So it does range quite a bit. Um, so this is really important, especially since we live in this dynamic, changing brackish environment. Um, salinity can change pretty often. So now that we've learned a little bit about a refractometer, we're actually going to sample um, right from the York River today. So I have my little pipette. I'm going to make sure I'm not getting sand, obviously. We're going to lift up this little clear flap, drop a couple drops right on that sensor, flap him down. I'm going to look through the eyepiece towards the light. And sometimes you need to focus the eyepiece a little bit. But this is telling me it's around 21 parts per thousand. So based on that, we know that this is brackish water. So we do have the Chesapeake Bay, which gets a lot of salt water from the Atlantic Ocean. But the York River starts inland, so we have a lot of fresh water coming in. So right here at the mouth of New York is where we have that mixture of fresh and salt water, creating that brackish environment. So 21 parts per thousand sounds about right for the York River.